Hello friends, welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights, Hong Kong's new insightful program looking into the lives of our most remarkable high achievers and getting their take on this city's past, present and future. Our guests will give their personal perspectives for a new generation, inspiring Hong Kong for a better society. So sit back and relax and we'll take you beyond the spotlights. Welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights, where we invite leading minds and game changers with incomparable experience and unique knowledge to come on our light-hearted yet informative show to help business leaders and the wider community gain insights, grasp opportunities, and see behind and beyond spotlights so we can get the full picture, dream bigger, and achieve more together. I'm your host for this episode. My name is Nick Chan, lawyer and lawmaker. And Friday Beyond Spotlights is honoured and pleased to present to you our guest today, Dr. Sunny Chai, BBS, JP, Chairman of the Federation of Hong Kong Industries and concurrently also the Chairman of the Hong Kong Science and Technology Park. Sunny, welcome on to the show. Thank you, Nick. Well, today you're here to talk about Hong Kong at the heart of industrialization 4.0. Are there particular special um, DNAs of Hong Kong, unique characteristics, why Hong Kong is so successful? Uh, in being the heart of industrialization or industrialization 4.0? Hong Kong definitely have a very major role because Hong Kong in terms of uh, our, our, our law, our, our prof professional services, like lawyer, mm -hmm. accountants, mm -hmm. uh, auditors, uh, designers, uh, uh, patent lawyers, okay, they all have very uh, prestige and, and uh, uh, outstanding uh, international standards. I must say, uh, in the recent years, uh, the government had committed to invest a lot mm. in, you know, in innovation and technology. Mm. The 130 uh, billion uh, invest into Hong Kong's INT is it really means something, and it's, it was done in in in, uh, in a few years. Uh, you talk about the Hong Kong government support. Uh, so apart from the Hong Kong SAR government, using great support from the central Chinese government. Okay, with the uh, 14 five-year plan, okay, that lays a very, very clear direction for Hong Kong in terms of uh, INT uh, to be a, a international INT hub. Mm. So, so what's the role for Hong Kong? Yeah. Okay, it's very clear that mm. it's international, the word international. So Hong Kong has, has already been uh, 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 praised in terms of some merits, like, such as uh, uh, being an international city, uh, uh, the, the good uh, rule of law, uh, our protection of IP, uh, and besides, uh, the, quali the quality of our universities. We have five uh, universities, top 100 in the mm. QS. Mm. So this is not just something that's come as a coincidence. The uh, rental in Hong Kong is quite expensive. I is this the, the right place to continue to do industrialization? The HKSTP had helped a lot in, on this. Now, with the three Inno parks, uh, uh, we have uh, over close to 150 grantees, and these grantees will had their 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 grant will grant with their lands and build the factories uh, since uh, the the 70s and 80s and 90s in in uh, TKO. The multi-story uh, buildings for specific uh, industry purpose I mentioned before. Uh, actually, HASTP rent them out at a very uh, economic uh, rate, and and these buildings are, are not not just simple regular factory buildings. They are such as built for high high uh, uh, floor loading, high ceiling, uh, tackle for advanced manufacturing, uh, etc. And some have clean rooms, right? Yeah, no. some of some of them are, are clean room ready mm. or or uh, is ready to be built. In Talking to you today, I think um, the penny dropped for me at least. It's no accident that you're both the chairman uh, and also of, of FHKI and also Science Park. Because these two, I mean, whilst they have very heavy burden, but these two things need to go together, industrialization or reindustrialization or being industrialist, uh, but also science, technology, innovation, entrepreneurship. These things come hand in hand. So having the same person at the helm of these two organizations, I think it's a great thing. What do you think? 
Okay, I, I didn't plan for the line <laughs> for uh, HASTP because uh, in the recent, uh, uh, one of the slogan, mm. when they were rebranding an industrial estate to Inno Park, they call it uh, R to I, R meaning to I. research to industry. Yeah. In, in the past, we were, mm. we were mostly talking about uh, research and development at Science Park, right. at uh, Park Secog area. Oh. And then, so after R&D, uh, what do you do? It's mm. commercialization. Right. But right. within commercialization, you need, you, you, you're missing some part, right. which is manufacturing. Right. You still have to go through uh, someone to help you within the industry. Mm -hmm. So how to I is a completion of the process. So you do the prototypes and, you know, exactly. re-engineering. Exactly. That's fantastic. By transforming businesses and adopting artificial intelligence, smart data, and advanced manufacturing practices in Hong Kong, this will pave the way for expansion into the Greater Bay Area and the uh, ASEAN economies. This will take the Made in Hong Kong label to the next level. Can you share with us the role of FHKI uh, for Hong Kong's industries and uh, business community? FHKI uh, was uh, founded in 1960 as one of the leading uh, industry associations in Hong Kong and uh, it's the only uh, statutory body uh, association uh, uh, currently. Uh, we have a very top-notch uh, governance within the association. And of course, it, it covers uh, almost all the industry, industries you can name in Hong Kong. When you say it covers all the industries in Hong Kong, um, does the word federation mean something more than the other business associations? Yes, it does. Um, Within the, uh, the Federation today, we have uh, 32 uh, industry groups. Uh, you can name from uh, chemical to biotech, electronics, toys, automation, and uh, two, even two industry groups uh, that we don't have voting rights are uh, uh, trading and professional services like uh, lawyers. China now accounts for one third of the world's output. Um, but, you know, some foreign politicians are turning into the color of your jacket, green with envy. <laughs> um, and then, you know, just to distract maybe from the domestic problems, um, they are saying China or maybe you guys are using slave labor. Is there such a thing? Uh, is slave labor available? Honestly, uh, I've been uh, operating factories in China since uh, 1986. Okay, <laughs> I've not heard of such things. Uh, I mean, I've not seen such things mm. among my factory or my sub, uh, subcontractors. Uh, sometimes you, we suddenly see a bit more uh, unilateral uh, sanctions. Uh, they are not really approved by the UN Security Council, but they do it anyway. Uh, is that hurting uh, the Chinese economy or is that also hurting the global supply line? Okay, let's put it this way. When we had the uh, increase of the tariff, um, for products made in uh, China and, and, and export to the U.S. Uh, that had created some trouble. Uh, but honestly, if you look at uh, the final impact, uh, manufacturers could not afford to reduce uh, their, 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 their price by 25%. They can't. I mean, the cost is there. And, and, and of course, recently, uh, last year particularly, uh, most of the material and uh, shipping costs, uh, container costs, uh, they have all gone up. So uh, who will be suffering at the end? It's an uh, end customer. Definitely will be end customer who will be suffering. Have businesses been thinking about diversifying their place of operation, uh, setting up shops in Vietnam or Cambodia and so on? But are they closing their factories in mainland China completely? No, it's, mm. it's uh, in the Federation, uh, we, we call this a, a, a China plus one. So if you look, if you look at uh, um, uh, industry like uh, electronics or electrical appliances, I would say it's very hard to, uh, to, to have a place to replace a massive factories uh, in China. Uh, the industrialists I have seen in, in our, in our the federation who open up the, their a China plus one a strategy with a factory in, in Vietnam or, or Thailand, uh, mostly uh, because of the tariff uh, issue. And uh, 
honestly, with uh, the, the direct cost is higher than, than China, of course. What do you make of the uh, double circulation strategy uh, in mainland China to boost the economy? So for a lot of um, uh, mainland manufacturers or Hong Kong manufacturers, uh, many of them has been looking into uh, domestic selling in, in mainland many years ago. And while we were enjoying our, our foreign business for a long, long time, but so is it the other way around now in, in, in mainland uh, with uh, many mainland manufacturers and they have been enjoying a lot of uh, businesses mostly uh, done domestically. So it's, it's, it's always nice to have a balance. Hong Kong's industries are well positioned to leverage on and succeed under national strategies, including the 14 to 5 year plan and the Greater Bay Area Development Plan. Hong Kong will prioritize advanced electronics, food technology and food processing, recycling and environmental industry, and the biotechnology industry, assisting these industries in setting up locally advanced manufacturing production lines to harness Hong Kong's strong R&D capabilities and favorable policy support in these fields. Hong Kong is a globally competitive city. Um, there's a lot to like about it. A lot of people from all walks of life live in Hong Kong in harmony. Uh, but in your words, um, you, someone who shares such a special bond with Hong Kong, what is so lovable, so special and unique about Hong Kong? The, the yeast, meat, vats uh, uh, scenario, I, it's very hard to replace it. Beautiful place. Yeah. Thank you, Sunny. Thank you, Nick. Well, we'll be back after the break.